Welcome, everybody. We're so glad you're joining us on this Friday afternoon, or maybe it's a little bit earlier in the day, depending on where you're um, joining us from, or maybe it's it's we're, we're already into tomorrow. But if you are looking for the academic presentation on electrical and computer engineering at WPI, you are in the right spot. And we're just going to give a moment here um, for folks to join us and then we'll get started. Um, I did wanna let folks know we are recording this session because we're gonna be putting it up um, on our on-demand content on our website. So um, thank you again for joining us. And if there's something that you miss or you wanna go back and, and hear again, um, it's gonna be right on demand on the WPI website. So we'll just give it just a minute for folks to come in. Um, while folks are joining us, I will share, we are using the Zoom webinar platform that I think we're all familiar with at this point, um, given where we've been the last 18 months, but um, we won't be using the chat feature for this particular webinar. We will be using the Q&A, so we'll save some time towards the end of the presentation for question and answer. So if you have any questions, feel free to just put them in the Q&A and we will go from there. Um, so with that, I think I'm going to pass things over to Professor Wiglinski, and he's going to introduce himself and spend some time um, talking to you a little bit about ECE and how that works here at WPI. Awesome. Awesome. So thank you, Kate. Uh, and hi, everyone. Uh, and welcome to uh, the um, Electrical and Computer Engineering Information Session about what is our program here all about at WPI. Uh, as Kate mentioned, my name is Alex Wiglinski. Uh, so I'm a professor. I've been at WPI since 2007. Uh, I'm also the Associate Dean of Graduate Studies. So if you have any Graduate Studies questions, I will be also able to answer that as well. Uh, but today, again, focus is on electrical and computer engineering and why it is one of the most awesome degree programs here at WPI. And I'll say why. It's because electrical and computer engineering, okay, it's all about design, problem solving, and innovation with respect to engineering our smart world. And you might say, smart world, what's that? Is it something that you go to, let's say, your um, you know, nearby um, uh, home improvement store and you say, hey, uh, let's go to the smart, smart world aisle and get one of those smart doorbells? No, no, no. It's much more than that, all right? So electrical and computer engineering, okay, or ECE, what it's about okay, is we deal with that boundary between the physical world, you, me, cars, heating systems, refrigerators, lighting, uh, space stations, and the cyber world, right? Like software, uh, your favorite social media application, um, you know, uh, on your cell phone, whatever operating system that you have there, an app. And what happens is electrical and computer engineering, ECE, is about interfacing, interfacing reliably and economically the two worlds, like that boundary, right? They just don't mesh together. You need intelligent, critical thinking skills in order to come up with a way of doing that efficiently. So that's what our program's all about. <laughs> so you came to the right place. Okay, uh, before I continue, don't forget, so we have Twitter, so if you're into Twitter, we have a Twitter handle. We also have an Instagram and we also have a Facebook, which, uh, you know, folks say, what? Facebook? Yes, yes. Facebook is still here, but, and we have definitely a page for that. Oh, so smart world. When you type it into Google, what do you get? Well, among other things, if you do an image search, you get this really cool diagram. And it's like, oh, great. What is it? Okay. So what smart world's all about, uh, it's just another way of saying, uh, we have our surrounding environment, right? You, me, birds, dogs, uh, family members, um, uh, rivers, uh, and, and the sun and the clouds and the weather and all that. And the infrastructure around us, the environment around us that adapts and tailors and uh, around us, surrounds us, immerses us in order to enhance our quality of life, right? So another way of saying it is, okay, so you see this map, you see planes, you see buildings, windmills, uh, bridges, um, a grandpa with, with his granddaughter and a doggy here and the cell phone and cars driving in the street. What is smart world? What the heck is it all about? Well, it's all about the following, especially from electrical and computer engineering perspective. 
So for instance, electrical and computer engineering in the context of smart world is things like green energy, right? So things like solar arrays, solar energy arrays, uh, windmills, something called the smart grid. And you might say, what the heck is a smart grid? So you have an electrical grid, how you distribute power from the generating stations to your home, but how do you do that efficiently? Like, do you just keep on generating power even if the need is low? Or, or are you able to produce enough energy when demand is high? Is there a way of adaptively or in intelligently being able to take energy and sending it as needed to where you know folks are requesting it, right? And so we do this partly, okay, well, main thing is because of sustainability. We want to make sure we have limited resources on the planet. We definitely have energy needs to drive the rest of our modern society, right? Uh, whether we're at home and we're watching TV or on the internet or in a, a, a work environment at school, we need electricity. And so we need ways of doing this effectively, efficiently, sustainably, okay? With, nat with hopefully renewable sources of energy. Um, this is my favorite. Did I say I'm a wireless person? I'm a wireless communications expert. So this thing is huge, right? 5G, 6G, GPS, all that jazz, right? Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. We live in a connected world, right? We use a lot of this technology from everything from navigating aircraft from one city to another, okay? Uh, to connecting from our cell phones to, let's say, to a class, you know, through a Zoom session on your smartphone. Right. So all of this, OK, is ECE. We teach things like wireless communications and GPS and navigation and all these other things that connect us. OK. At the same time, things like electronic health, pacemakers, OK, body area networks, sensors, like allows us to stay healthy, allows for medical practitioners to monitor us. Um, when we're outpatients, we're not in a hospital, but they can monitor our health, keep us safe, allow us to heal, but we don't have to be in a hospital because unfortunately, hospital stays as great as the staff are really is not a lot of fun. And then things like connected and autonomous vehicles. Like I'm not sure how many of you have an autonomous or a connected vehicle. You probably have connected vehicles, but in terms of autonomous vehicles, that's the future, right? But all of that, brake pads, no, that's not ECE. Uh, steering wheels, that's not ECE. But connecting two cars together, connecting the car with the traffic light to tell it to go from red to green, uh, the ability for the car to drive itself, the LIDAR that's on top of the car, that's ECE. LIDAR is ECE. It's a sensor. I'm collecting information of my physical world and translating it into information that I can take actions on with my vehicle. And then my vehicle translates the decisions back into mechanical motions, how the wheel, uh, the wheel steers uh, and, and how fast or how slow the car drives. Okay, That's ECE. Environmental sensors. Is my river polluted? What's the water level? What's the tidal level? Right. Uh, how's that forest doing? How much carbon dioxide is being collected from the air, right? That type of stuff, environmental sensors, is, is sensors in general is electrical and computer engineering. And then smart infrastructure, smart homes, smart communities. Like for me, I can go into the room next door and I can bring my daughter's baby monitor, right? Uh, that, okay, maybe it's not smart, but it's sure as heck. I'll show you in a few minutes, like after this presentation, like, that is for sure 100% electrical and computer engineering, okay? All right, so I talked all about applications, right? Self-driving cars, aircraft, Wi-Fi and 5G, uh, environmental sensors, sustainable energy, smart homes, smart cities, all that jazz. And you might say, okay, electrical and computer engineering is all about like technology. It's all about green circuit boards with blinky lights and stuff, right? I had I had to say I like doing that noise, right? No, no. ECE is about critical thinking. Okay, very important. Before you even hit the technology, it's critical thinking. Okay, and it's about problem and it's about pr critical thinking, problem solving, teamwork. Right. So in WPI ECE, okay, about sixty percent of our classes have labs. Okay, at the undergraduate level. There's a lot of collaboration, a lot of teamwork, okay? And we, and a lot of times it's not just like, you know, 
like, uh, like, you know, here's an expression for the resistance and the voltage. What's the current in that? No, in a lot of cases, there's also a lot of like open-ended questions. Let's explore this. How will you solve that? Way before you reach MQP, right? So it's really important, right? Before you hit senior year in your senior design project, there's a lot of these opportunities to collaborate with your classmates on, on projects that allow you to have, you have to think, how do I solve this? And I do this economically and I do make it a practical solution that's viable, right? That's what ECE is all about. And, and you do, and you know, it's such a great community to learn and grow and you will apply it not only to your careers, but to many aspects of your lives, right? Okay, so in terms of faculty, like myself, right? So ECE kind of like breaks itself according to this grid pattern, okay? So we have e-health, right? You know that thing about like, you know, the pacemaker and the body area network and prosthetic limbs and such like that? Well, we have faculty that specialize in research like that. And why am I bringing up faculty research? Well, because I always say that if you have a faculty member that's very active at the cutting edge of a specific research discipline, in a lot of cases, they translate their knowledge to all of you in class, right? A lot of the projects I teach in my classes usually are like, hey, like, you know, just like, let's say a few minutes before my actual lecture, it's like, hey, I don't know how to solve it. I think I'm going to try that for like wireless communications. So let's say I'm doing something in 5G. How do I solve that? <laughs> and then I teach class and say, hey, folks, how will we do this for something that's related to 5G? It's that ability to take cutting edge and then bring it into classroom so you get to experience that cutting edge research, that cutting edge knowledge and applications and technology that you will use once you graduate from here. So eHealth, we have seven faculty specializing in eHealth all cutting edge, body area networks, custom circuits that you know are basically thin like scotch tape that you put onto someone's arm that sends wireless signals to a doctor's office about let's say how much oxygen's in your blood or what's your pulse rate, right? What's your blood sugar level? Things like that, right? We have cyber physical systems. This is the definition of that cyber and physical divide and connecting the two. Like, so for instance, like, you know, I'm the second dot over here, right? Like that time I'm actually wearing a suit, but I do wireless communications. And what does wireless communications do? Well, let's say I take a signal, I take information, I take something I want, like some message, I wanna convey some very, very far away place. So what I do is I take that message and then I convert it into information. Now I'm in the cyber world and then I convey it over a medium, like the air, wirelessly, or maybe over a fiber optic cable. And then it gets converted back to the message to my intended recipient. Could be my mom. Hey, Ma, how's it going? My mom can't hear that because she's 350 miles away in Montreal, Canada. But what happens is I can say over my cell phone, hey, Ma, how's it going? Okay. And on my cell phone, I have Skype. Skype turns that audio signal into ones and zeros. It then communicated across a 5G network over the internet. It then goes to another 5G network in Montreal, connects to my mom's cell phone and bloop. And then she hears, how's it going? And I say, and then she says, it's snowing here already. <laughs> no, just kidding. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there in New England. <laughs> cybersecurity, oh yes. But cybersecurity, not like ransomware and not like hacking into servers. I mean, cybersecurity as like, hacking into circuit boards, hacking into, let's say, devices, your credit card, but not your credit card number, but the credit card, the little chip, the smart chip that's on it. We're talking about physical cybersecurity. How do you compromise something from like looking at its electromagnetic signatures and other sort of things where we need to do things like encryption, right? That we have a ton of expertise here at WPI. And then power and sustainability. And that's things like so solar cells and photovoltaics and smart grid. We have expertise in that as well. So now what happens is the, the flow chart that we have, if you go into the undergrad flow chart, you see this beautiful, beautiful testament to our awesome curriculum here at WPI ECE. So we have a lot to offer, but it looks kind of overwhelming. Like, oh my God, that's a law of box, the law of arrows. What do I do? How do I specialize? So, so here's the method behind the madness. There are, we're going to look at it both 
vertically, and we're going to look at this horizontally. So let's look at this horizontally first, okay? So first of all, when you start WPI and you're an electrical and computer engineering major, you start with the fundamentals. You always have to start with the fundamentals, unless you already know circuit analysis, you already know what a resistor is, and you know embedded computing, and then you can bypass it. So remember, WPI, there are no prerequisites in the courses. Uh, there's recommended, there's suggested, and all that jazz. But but what happened, and because part of the reason is some folks might say, I already know embedded technology. Like, do I really need to take 2049? Uh, how well do you know embedded? Well, my parents' company, I do a lot of the embedded programming there. Oh, okay. Then it will probably be a waste of time. You could jump to, uh, in this case, ECE 3849 instead, which is real-time embedded systems, which you may or may not have skill sets in, right? But let's say you and everybody else you might start off with ECE 2010, gets everybody on the same foundation of electrical and computer engineering, right? And then you begin branching off, okay? Like you could do sensor circuits and systems. So this is the real like circuity stuff, you know, resistors, capacitors, inductors, wires, soldering, maybe some chips, all being like put on circuit boards. That's 2019. 2311, this is when the all the world is information, electrical information. How do I process it? How do I visualize it? How do I filter it? How do I take care of any sort of disturbance or distortion to it? Then 2049 is about that embedded processor. So, so I'm not sure if you want to put into the Q&A um, or if there's a way of raising your hand or anything. I don't know. But, but, um, but the thing is, if you played with a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino or an MSP430, this is the course that provides that sort of structured environment for learning of how to use that technology and, and make sure you got a foundation because that's going to be really important for something like Internet of Things, right? And then digital circuit design, the world is logical and digital circuit design is logic applied to circuits, digital circuits. So it's a really cool course if you're trying to understand like, you know, how do you process Binary one plus binary one. How do you or them together, and them together, nor them together? Like they're like the logic behind the computers that process our information. Okay. So that's basically your first, maybe the start of your second year. You begin taking some of these classes. And then you take the intermediate courses. So now it's like, okay, enough of the fundamentals. Let's start getting dangerous. Okay. And then you start looking at contemporary power systems or electromagnetic fields or discrete time signals and systems or real time embedded, as I mentioned before. So this is when you begin saying, okay, I have this fundamental knowledge. I want to start specializing. I want to start exploring a little bit more advanced stuff. Okay. And then from, and then once you've taken enough intermediate courses, this is the coolest course ever which is ECE 2799. It's a seven week long open-ended project-based course that you and two best friends, actually, no, they're not best friends. Basically, you're gonna be paired up with two other people. And in seven weeks, you gotta build something and defend it in a shark tank-like environment. Ha, you know? So let's say the theme is build something that's uh, in, uh, sustainable, okay? Build something that's sustainable. You got seven weeks, so you brainstorm and you become come up with a product design. Then you explore the trade-offs of what that product should have, what features, this and that, and then you start implementing, okay? And once you have it, then at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you do your entrepreneurial thing and you try and sell it to a collection of judges who are like business folks, see if they would buy it. Right. That, I'm not sure if they would actually buy it, but a lot of folks who actually do this course end up going into entrepreneurship co uh, competitions afterwards. It's actually really cool. It's really cool. Now, lastly, you have the advanced and specialized courses. You can also take grad courses. So talk with your academic advisor. So the number one thing is, remember, because we don't have prerequisites, it's all recommended and suggested courses, see your academic advisor, get their input, see if what you're laying out makes sense if there's anything you could do better in terms of arranging your courses. But talk with them about like, hey, maybe I also wanna do grad courses afterwards. I wanna do a master's degree in one year after that. It's called our BSMS program. But the advanced courses allows you to specialize in stuff. And that's where the vertical views come in, right? There's the left third, middle third, 
and right third. So left third is our analog circuits and power, okay? Uh, stovepipe, concentration, if you want to call it that. And it's all about the circuit stuff, right? It's all about power engineering. It's all about electromagnetic fields. It's about microelectronics one and two and semiconductor devices design. The middle third is about wireless communications, biomedical signal processing, machine learning, okay? That's the middle third and control theory. Don't forget control theory. And then the last third, okay, the right third is your computer engineering, right? Computer engineering is different than computer science. Computer science is all about algorithms devoid of what hardware runs on. Computer engineering is no, you kind of need to think about the hardware you're running on, right? You cannot create these humongous algorithms and say, yeah, it'll run on Arduino. No. So there's always a saying that I, I, I mention in almost all my classes and all my students and all the time, and maybe they're kind of getting sick and tired of me saying this, but engineers do for 10 cents what everybody else does for a dollar, right? So we got to look at something and we got to solve the problem practically. So if we want to implement an algorithm, we want to implement some software, but you're constrained by the digital hardware you're implementing on. By the way, there's a finite power supply. By the way, we have these constraints in terms of size, in terms of cost, in terms of temperature range for operation. Okay, that's computer engineering. Combine actually the power stuff is more like on the left third, but but you see that's where electrical and computer engineering comes in. We gotta we gotta translate stuff to make it practical, cost effective, power efficient. Okay, all that fun stuff and more. Now, what are some examples of ECE projects? So, um, like, you know, like, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. So what you could do, and maybe I'm going to run one of these videos. Actually, no, I'll, 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 uh, I'll deal with this after. But we do have a YouTube channel. So if you look for WPI ECE, there are YouTube videos of WPI ECE Senior Design Capstone Projects. We call Major Qualifying Projects or MQPs. And these are students who completed these senior design capstone projects in our department, and they vary, okay, in things like, for instance, building electric car harnesses for custom Formula One, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, vehicles. Uh, there's also things like a, a wireless, uh, wireless uh, uh, electrocardiogram sensors to monitor your heart rate, and many others. So I'll bring up that video if time permits, okay? And then student life. So obviously ECE is a lot of work. As you can see, we do a lot of really cool stuff, um, but we're also part of a really awesome and vibrant community, right? We have three, we have three, three student organizations. We have IEEE, okay? We have HKN, which is the ECE Honor Society, and we have Women in Electrical Computer Engineering. So we have this vibrant student community with student organizations that organize things like networking events between our, our community and alumni and employers. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Kate, for putting out the, uh, the YouTube link. Um, so, so we have that. Oops. And then uh, we also have professional development opportunities, how to improve your resume, how to prepare for a job interview. And then we have mentorship, you know, folks that are in their fourth year supporting first year students in our department, okay? So, and that's really a lot of stuff. And then a lot more things, a lot of fun stuff, uh, field trips, we have spark party that's coming up, raw, that's gonna be so cool, okay? So, so really what ECE is, we're a close knit community. You get a lot of value add out of our program. You can specialize in things. Our employment record is really high, like, you know, like, definitely well over 90% placement amongst all our students in, in the department. And so it's really a big deal, but let me, let me, let me dig into, let me dig into something that would be 100% ECE like. So I'm just, um, so then I'll show the video, but I, th this thing I actually gave, um, where did I give it? Ah, here we go. So this I gave um, a f a f about, a f about earlier this year, and this was kind of like a fun presentation uh, it was meant to be fun, but actually, I think it captures electrical and computer engineering pretty well. So let me fast forward. So, uh, do, 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 do. so the smart world that I was talking about, right? Okay. Nope. Oh, you, you folks don't see it. Do, do, do. 
And I'm not sure, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Yay, I think you're seeing what I'm seeing. All right, so to me, I'm a wireless person. So I'm gonna put all this wireless technology, but let's move forward one, okay? Wait, there we go. So remember Smart World, right? The, the thing I'm talking about, like, you know, hey, intelligent doorbells, uh, intelligent uh, refrigerators and microwaves and Roombas and all that jazz. So this is where electrical and computer engineering really plays a role, right? So if you were to treat um, engineering smart world and engineering all this cyber physical stuff as like a, like a recipe, like, you know, you're cooking, you know, in my case, let's say you're making pierogi because pierogi making is so awesome. Um, the way this would turn out would be something along the lines of like, for instance, there would be a ton of embedded processing. So remember I was talking about like 2049, ECE 2049 and ECE 3849, that stuff. Your Raspberry Pis, your Arduinos, your MSP430s, any other sort of those embedded technologies, you'll find them everywhere. Your car has a gajillion of these, actually maybe about 150 of them, but you know everything from your power steering and your fuel injection and your automatic transmission to the power windows has embedded technology in order to do all that sort of digital processing, digital decision-making. Sensor technology, yeah, absolutely. Let's go back to that car, right? You have like, like, you know, like for instance, blind spot detection, collision avoidance, right? Your image processing thing that allows you to drive a safe dif distance away from the car ahead of you. You know, camera sensors, radar sensors, LIDARs, that's all electrical and computer engineering. Six ounces of connectivity. I think six ounces is maybe a bit too little, maybe eight ounces, but connectivity is really important. That information exchange is so critical. You absolutely need it. And then of course I'm doing optional stuff because you know, for taste, right? So like for instance, data science, that's a separate program altogether, but we have all that information and someone's got to process it. Uh, motors and actuators, yeah. If you're trying to understand motors and actuators, um, understanding the concept, that's part of that power, right? Power electronics and power engineering, like th that's all well within that. That's an electrical and computer engineering thing. Systems engineering, how does all these complex stuff fit together efficiently is electrical and computer engineering. And cybersecurity and cloud networking. Cloud networking, no. Cybersecurity from the hardware perspective to protect all these wonderful things against uh, malicious people, right? Attackers, hackers, all those folks. Um, that's, that's what we do in electrical and computer engineering. And of course, you know, uh, the ingredients, that, the amount of ingredients that I have listed here really vary from person to person. Again, just like pierogi, you know, I like mine with potato filling, but other people might want to have theirs filled with apple. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I've heard that like apple, you fill pierogi with apple, I, like anyways, to each their own. So uh, let's bring up that one video. And then I'm going to turn the floor over to questions because um, you know, I think people are probably tired of hearing me yabber a lot. So this is our YouTube page, right? The electrical and computer engineering YouTube page. Obviously we're like getting tons of like, you know, like visitors, no, just kidding. Actually, seriously, like smash that uh, button, like, you know, subscribe um, uh, because, you know, right now we're trying to revamp it. But uh, what you want to look at is these things here. So let's go at the videos. And let's find a really cool, yeah, here we go, electrocardiogram. So before I continue, do, 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 I, there is an option, yeah, share sound. Ha, huh. Zoom, you're so funny. Um, let's see. Hi, I'm Lizzie. I'm Peter. And we are the wireless ECG team advised by Professor Clancy. The goal of our project was to develop a wireless and compact ECG system to be placed directly on a patient to do both monitoring and clinical applications. ECG or electrocardiogram is a very important physiological signal that clinicians often need to access in order to correctly diagnose patients. So our system is designed to be worn on the chest and not obstruct the patient's chest at all because clinicians might need access to the patient's chest for other life-saving measures. So this system is very small and we're confident that it can become even smaller in size. As you can see right now, I'm wearing our development board. I have a Bluetooth system here in my pocket that I can actually pull out and show you. This system is wirelessly transmitting my data over here to our computer where we have our master board and the data shown in real time on the screen.
All right. So that was awesome. Um, but no, seriously, and that's that's a very typical that's a very typical electrical and computer engineering uh, MQP. It's usually hyper focused on let's say one thing. In this case, a wireless um, electrocardiogram sensor, right? That's connected wire that that connects through Bluetooth to some sort of base station that can then communicate information to a health practitioner. Uh, but there's a variety of other projects out there. Some are kind of big. Some are very competitive, like you know like massive in, in scale, but they don't have to be. But they do allow for, for everybody to kind of look and explore and see how you go from you know, a specific problem to solving it and designing it and taking into consideration all the requirements, all the constraints and building a proof of concept. So with that, uh, I think I'm going to like stop there and um, take any questions. And I think there's like at least there was a Q&A thing that there, lit up and- There were, and if you wanna look, um, if you click on answer, you'll see, I did answer some of them. I was able okay. to do that with some links and some of them were more admissions related questions. But one question that we did have, and I did put a link in there to sort of examples of major projects for ECE. And I know that in the past, there has been that opportunity to go to the China Project Center to do your major project, but that was a question. What, it, what opportunities are there to complete that major project globally or off uh, campus, right? So I, I'm not sure what the, what the what is um, like how things are working now with respect to international travel, right. but I can speak based on sort of past experiences of things like let's say the China Project Center. So um, electrical and computer engineering often fits there in terms of let's say the manufacturing process. So like for instance, like for instance, with electrical and computer engineering, remember um, one big thing of like that I didn't mention, I kind of said blah, 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 control is industrial automation. You might say, oh, industrial automation, isn't that mechanical engineering? No, no. So there's manufacturing, yes, in terms of like, this is how, this is the temperature of the steel that needs to be rolled out at this way and shaped and formed and cooled and blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine but there's all this other stuff, right? Uh, in terms of timing, in terms of how do you take, let's say, steel from the smelter and then driving it through and robotic arms and sensors and then computer control everything. And the magic word there is control. So control theory is, is uh, the process of like translating a decision made by a computational device, your embedded processor or your server, whatever it is, and then translate into action. So like, for instance, an autonomous vehicle, it's like, you don't have a car, it's like, or autonomous vehicle, and here's the wheel, right? And then the decision for the autonomous vehicle says, turn right, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Especially if you do that at like 75 miles per hour, I think that's when you do that, you know, the car flips over multiple times, right? I've never tried it, but I wouldn't want to <laughs> ever do that in my life. But Me either. <laughs> it's like it's like it's so tempting but no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so what happens is control theory is about how do you take action mechan mechanical action but you do it in a way that accounts for the physics of the world like so for instance like autonomous vehicles like if you do control theory what are some of the factors that need to become uh, that need to be considered uh for one the mass of the vehicle so you have this vehicle, it's going at a specific velocity, there's specific friction on the road. Um, and then what happens is, okay, now I want to change lanes. Okay, so it's not going to happen instantaneously. So you're going to have to like gradually in a, in a controlled manner, go from one lane into another. Oh, by the way, I need to make sure that I don't have vehicles behind me or ahead of me or inside of me in a blind spot that I could potentially collide in. Um, what else is there? Oh yeah, and don't forget crosswinds. So there's all these factors that you need to take into consideration. So controls is a way of doing stuff that like, you know, you take your information world and it interacts with the physical world in a way that accounts for the mass, for the physics of the environment. So, but that's an excellent question. So the thing is in industrial automation, yeah. Like imagine you are part of like a steel mill. Like that's a lot of mass. That's a very dangerous environment. And you have all these processes. How do you do it such that it's almost like ballet, 
right? And it's efficient, it's cost effective, okay? It's safe. So that's a that's a, so that's like the China Project Center. That's one of our international project center. It's more again more heavily um, geared towards like um, uh, like you know manufacturing and stuff. But ECE is definitely there. And I would add to that that the, it is possible actually to go have a global experience with three of our major pro, three of our larger projects: the WPI, the Humanities and Arts, the IQP, which is the Interactive Qualifying Project, and then the major project. So. Maybe you choose not to go to a global project center for your major project, but you absolutely um, would have the opportunity to do that for the IQP or the interactive qualifying project in your junior year. Another question that just came in was how many of the electrical engineering classes are virtual versus in person? And in general terms, I can share, and then I'm gonna pass it to you, that, um, that we have brought our students back to campus. So, um, we are really back and in person. And last year it was a, a mix of both, but it was a, a lot in person. So I don't know what you would add to that. Oh, it's, it's everything's in person. Everything's in person. So everyone, like, you know, the thing is we have all the protocols. We have, um, you know, multiple, like, you know, we have testing, like, uh, yeah. like you know, like, like, you know, like the campus, like as President Leshen uh, describes it, we're in a bubble, right? So we're in this protected bubble. Uh, we have protocols in place to keep everybody safe. Uh, in the building themselves, uh, you know, there's like, uh, you know, um, uh, what is it like, you know, uh, stations that, you know, you have like hand sanitizer, you have towels, like uh, you have alcohol spray, like in case you want to clean the surface or your laptop and such. Uh, and you, you have you have everything there in order to create a safe educational environment, but everything's in person. And, and I think that's really important because I think WPI in, per, in particular uh, are one of our core strengths is that project-based learning. And, and uh, you know, when last year, so I, I did a lot of like uh, online, like uh, education with my undergraduate classes and um, we did it, we did project-based learning, but, but the, the dynamic is still quite tricky, but, but I made it work. But I think the optimal experience obviously is like you're there with your classmates, with your professor, with your teaching assistant, interacting with each other. Right. And what we've done is we built a safe environment in order to enable enable to do that, but to do it safely. That's a great answer. And I would add to that, whether it's um, some different clubs and activities and events that we were having on campus with that in the, within that bubble and that twice weekly testing protocol and all the other hand washing stations and all that good stuff are not hand washing stations. But to your point, the sanitizer, um, we've 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 been able to. They're to everywhere. The, yeah, <laughs> to bring the campus. Um, I'm surprised I don't have a job. Oh, I do have one on my desk over here. Um, we've been able to bring um, the students back to campus. Exactly. Any other questions? It looks like we've, we've gone through all of the questions, but we do have time for one, one or two last questions if anybody has them. Um, and we're certainly going to put this recording up on our website as well, so you can watch it on demand. So so if there are no other questions, one thing I could always uh, say is, like, first of all, and I need to emphasize this again, um, so like, if you're looking for an exciting career based on an electrical and computer engineering major, like, yes, like we are, like, you know, the thing is all our students absolutely don't have any problems finding a career using their electrical and computer engineering majors upon graduation. And a lot of companies, the number of times I have companies reach out to me saying, do you like, you know, again, I'm the wireless person and they say, uh, do you have anybody that can do wireless communication that can understand how to do work and design in 5G um, or any sort of broadband connectivity? And, and, you know, there's a point where it's like, like, like they're like saying, we wish we have more because WPI students, industry loves WPI students because of that project base, two things because of project-based education, because you now know how to synthesize concepts on in class into actual practical real world experiences. And then two, the seven week term, you might say like, how? Because industry is always fast paced, what quarter we're in, like, you know, like this thing's due yesterday. And the seven week term, that pace actually prepares you for life in industry because in industry is like, oh, this thing is due tomorrow at 9 a.m. No problem. It feels like my days at WPI. So you have a great major, right? Electrical and computer engineering. 
And, and, and the thing is in particular, the ability of doing the project-based learning, right? So we not, only are, uh, we not only know the theory, we can also turn into practice. And also the short timeframes prepare us for things where we jump into a career and it's like, hey, uh, like, you know, you're, you're comfortable with like a fast pace of a, of a company. I think we do have a question. We do. <laughs> can you tell me about your co-op program? So I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb. Actually, no, I don't need to go on a limb. So I do have academic advisees. I do co-ops. Most of them do summer internships. Um, and, and the reason is, is like, you know, you have ABCD summer internship, ABCD summer internship. Some students actually do co-ops uh, and there's pluses and minuses with respect to co-ops. So uh, the pluses are companies love co-ops because instead of like, oh, you're with us for three months, we better train you as much as possible. And then, oh, what, the summer's over? Ah, but it's not that bad because what happens, especially with a lot of our juniors. So when you go from their third year to your fourth year, because I mentioned because of how ECE majors are in high demand, a lot of companies start making offers for full-time employment upon graduation at the end of your summer internship between your third and fourth year before you become a senior. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's, how, that's how competitive the job market is now, like companies going after ECE majors. Co-ops on the one hand are really awesome because now you stay a very long time, very as in like eight months with a company, you learn a lot. So you're not only in a training phase, you're like, wow, I'm going to get into like, you know, like all the details of this job. You really begin developing a relationship with your employer, with your team and everything like that. And it's just absolutely fantastic. Bad news is, oh, shucks, I have to go back to WPI. Well, no, you shouldn't say, oh, shucks. Like people love coming back to WPI, but it's like, like the, the thing is that that's like coming back after eight months in a company it's it's a, it's a little tricky because then some of your friends are a like you know um, two terms ahead of you and it's just that reacclimation. But at the same time, again, that relationship of the company. Sometimes what companies will do with co-op students in particular is say, "Could you work for us part time, even when you're studying full time?" So it's like so there there's so many positives, and this is especially true with electrical computer engineering. This is especially true. The number of companies that say. Oh, can you work with us on a part-time basis as well? So you get your tuition covered, or at least a good chunk of it, living costs, and you just continue to develop that relationship with that company. Excellent question. These are excellent questions. Any yeah, other questions for, awesome. for me or anything like that before we, we call it a day? We'll give it a second for folks to uh, type any in. And I, I'm going to just put in the chat, just we have a lot of virtual programming and other academic sessions and all sorts of good stuff planned this fall. So I'm going to put a plug for that right into the chat. Um, and um, we do a lot of programming in the spring too for accepted students, very similar to this. And our, it's our hope that we'll be able to even do it in person. Wouldn't that be so much fun um, in the spring? Yeah, I just put my email address in the chat. So in Thank case anybody you. says, uh, like, you know, reach out to me later or something like that and say, hey, what was that you said about like, um, you know, like for instance, like electrical and computer engineering majors getting jobs and stuff like, yeah, you know, no. And that's actually the, the other question that folks do ask a lot is about with respect to like, hey, I'm really undecided between computer science and electrical and computer engineering. Like, which one should I do? And uh, my, 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 you know, I put on my hat and, uh, and I say, yes. And you say, well, what do you mean? Yes. So you could do an electrical and computer engineering major, right. And you can do a computer science minor and better yet. Let's just like, let's just like, uh, add to that. So let's say you really like computer stuff. Let's just say, I love computer stuff, but I don't know which one to do. Electrical and computer engineering major, specialize in computer engineering, take a computer science minor, you have your cake and you eat it too. So you get to understand the algorithms really well. And you also understand how those algorithms get implemented onto digital and computing technology. Oh my God. Oh, there is a question. <laughs> yeah, and the question was about um, other international opportunities. And so what I'm going to put in the chat is just, um, we talked about project-based learning. We have 50 plus project centers all over the world. So um, there is are definitely opportunities, maybe not as many specific to your major project in ECE, but there are opportunities to go 
on it, to every continent but Antarctica. The students that I work with always like to say that, that the hope is that one day we can get a project center going in Antarctica, but there's yeah. lots of opportunity for those experiences. Oh, that would be so awesome. I, I would totally, I would totally be there. Although like, you know, like, uh, I'm not sure about the South Pole, but definitely somewhere on the ocean, like, you know, like, uh, but no, that, that would, that would be so cool. <laughs> okay, we'll get you working on that. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. I, so I put, I put in actually the, the, um, uh, like the ECE YouTube channel and also the project based learning. So for, for global programs as well, but yeah, oh no, this is awesome. That's um, great. So I think, all right. yeah, yeah. I think we're all set. So yeah. So, so, so if, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, you go. You go. No, I mean, if anyone has any questions, feel free to contact me by email, um, and uh, I'll be very happy to uh, provide any additional information. But uh, thank you, everyone, for your time. Kate, thank you again for your for for supporting all of this and uh, and all the questions and, and such. Uh, you're awesome. Thank you. Well, my pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for talking about ECE. I learn something new every time. So um, thank you again, everybody. If you have questions, reach out reach out to our office, reach out to Professor Woglinski through his email, and we're happy to help in any way that we can. Awesome. Have a great fall, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Have Thank a great you. weekend. Bye-bye.